Hello and welcome to the triggers video. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use trigger actions. Specifically, I'll be showing you how to make it so that when you are close enough to this door, you can press the button to open it. If you don't have a first person controller, there's a download link for one in the description. You can also build your own. And if you don't know how, be sure to check out our first person controller tutorial. So first, we're going to set up the button that controls the door. Then we're going to set up the trigger that makes it so you can only press the button when you are standing in front of it. We're gonna need a wall to put the door in, so make a cube. I'm gonna call it wall. It's gonna set its height to something taller than the player. Let's do seven. Let's scooch it up a bit. And then make it nice and long like this. And with the wall selected, I'm going to hit control D and I'm going to move these over like this. We'll put a little door in this gap right here. So I'll duplicate it again to create the door. Hit F2 to rename this, call it door, scooch it over to the middle right here. I'm going to scale back this length. Something like that's pretty good. Now let's make the button that opens the door. So I'm going to make a sphere and call it door button and move it over so it's kind of sticking out of the wall. I'm going to add an FSM to it. Call this FSM door button. Gonna put a set material color action on it. I'm gonna make this red. I'm gonna call the state door closed. I'm gonna add a system event to this. Mouse down. So when we click on it, it'll shoot this off. Holding control and dragging out, I'm gonna create a new state. This state I'm gonna call door open. And put another set material color in here. This one I'm going to change to green. And I'm going to add another mouse down transition that'll send us back. So now if you press play, and when you click it, it will go back and forth between red and green. Endlessly entertaining, I know, but calm down, there is still more work to be done. Now to make the button functional and actually open our door, I'm going to add a new state and I'm going to set this as our start state. Going to add a get position. And for this vector three, I'm going to store it as a new variable called door closed vector three. We'll set this to our door object. Add a finish transition over here and just send it back to this loop we made. In the door closed state, add a tween position action. Instead of use owner, we're gonna specify the game object. We'll drag and drop our door into there. So you'll see that it's going from its current position to a world position. Now in this world position, we basically want it to be exactly where it is. So this is where we use that vector three from the first state. So we can select this door closed vector three. Now I can use that vector three as its closed state to return to. The ease type will put uh, ease in and out quad. This is just to make it look nice and smooth when it starts and stops. Let's make it a little longer so we could set this time to say two seconds. And we'll check this real time box to make it actually count in seconds. Now you can copy this tween position and paste it in the door open state. To make the door move upward, we can change the two options to local offset. and uncheck this so we can just set the Y value to something like one. Now, when you press play, it 
you hit this red button, it opens the door, press the green button, it closes the door. But the problem is, I wanted to, I can go all the way over here, the edge of this place, and if I get lucky, I can still open the door from all the way over here. Doors don't work like that. We want it so that you can only press the button when you are close enough to it. And that is when the trigger actions come in. That's what this whole video is about. This is about me or you or anyone else. This isn't about whether or not mankind is doomed by our own ignorance. This isn't about the person you love most in the world. No, this is about trigger actions. And setting up triggers is super easy. First, we'll create a cube and let's make sure it's right next to the button. So right click on the button, 3D object cube. We're going to call it button trigger. Let's turn off its mesh render so we can see things a little better. And then we're going to make it a little bigger like, like that. So within this bounding box is where you would have to be standing in order to click the button. We're going to give this an FSM. And we can call it button trigger. We're going to give it a trigger event action, which lets us send events based on how two colliders interact with each other. We can set it to do something when colliders enter each other's space or when they enter and then stay there for a moment or when they exit each other's space after having been in each other's space. For this first one, we're going to set it to enter. Setting a collide tag will let us tell it to only pay attention to game objects with the selected tag. This way it doesn't go responding to every collider that might get near it. So let's set this to player. And on our player game object, we will set the tag to player if it isn't already. Now for this trigger event, we need to send an event. So I'll create a new one and we'll call it at button. Create that transition and send it off to a new state. Let's go ahead and copy and paste that trigger event action. Except we'll change the trigger type to trigger exit. And the send event, we will give it something called not at button. And then send it back. So if we hit play, you can see that we can't even get to the button anymore. So if you click on this button trigger, you'll see over here, it says is trigger. So I'm just going to stop runtime for a second. Change this to is trigger. Now I'll hit play. And now we can actually step in and out of the trigger. Now you can see down there in the FSM, it goes back and forth between the two states. Let's name these two states. We'll call this one not at button and this one at button. I'm sure naming one zebra and the other 59924 would be just as effective, but there's enough chaos and evil in our world right now, so just dial it back a little bit. Now that this trigger is set up to recognize us, we have to set up how it lets us interact with the button. There's lots of ways to do this, but we're going to do this a real quick and dirty way now that we've learned how triggers work. On the not at button state, we can add in an enable FSM action. We'll put our door button object as the game object to control and clicking these three little dots will show us the available FSMs on that game object. So we'll click this one, the door button FSM, and we'll uncheck enable, which is another way of saying disabling it. And we'll keep reset on exit checked. So this is saying it will disable our door button when this state is active. Since it's at the start state in this FSM, that means our button will be disabled at the start of the game. But with this little reset on exit action checked, it will enable the button when this FSM exits the state by going into the next one. So if we press play, you'll see that can't click this button when we're this far. But if you get close enough to it, now that we're in here, you can click it. You'll see that there is this problem though, where if you step into it, open the door and then step back and then step back in again and then click it, our door goes even higher. Now that's because when we were stepping back in and out, it was resetting 
the FSM on the door. It took that as its current start state is up in the air. So when we move out of it right now, it thinks that this is its start state. So we move back and hit this button again, it goes even further away from us. This is easily solved by going into the FSM settings and changing this reset state on disable to off. So now if we hit play, we could press the button, sends it up, step out, step back in, click it again, and it closes like it should. All right, so in this tutorial, we learned how to move things around with the tween position action. And then we learned how to enable and disable FSMs with a simple trigger event action. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.